In the beginning of the book, the call of the wild buck is a completely different dog than the one in the end. He's a dog who lazes around in the California sunshine, and he's a dog who is completely domestic. In the end of the book, Buck is running with wolves and is one of the greatest sled dogs in history. I can prove this with different events in the book. One example would be when Buck kills Spitz, taking his place as lead dog. This is already a drastic change, compared to page 16 when he has never been in a sled before. On page 16, he is placed in front of Dave, who was a more experienced sled dog than Buck. Dave would nip Buck every time he made a mistake. That spot was so he could learn how to be a sled dog. This new spot is completely different than the old one. Buck is now the lead dog, instead of being a follower. He has to be able to control and rule all the dogs on the team, which is a great responsibility for someone so new to the team. Buck is lucky he inherited all those sled dog and wolf qualities from his ancestors. He probably wouldn't have been able to handle being lead dog without those qualities rising to the surface and changing his mind and character. These changes are a great thing for Buck. Another example would be when Buck learns how to steal the bacon on page 22. On that page, Buck witnesses Pike, a newer dog, steal some bacon from Perro, one of the humans. When he sees that, he duplicates the move the next day but somehow he manages to get more than just a slice. He gets a whole chunk of the meat. Even when he's copying someone, he manages to one-up them. This is completely different to them just a page before, when he eats so slowly other dogs actually come up to him and steal his food while he's still eating. The changes within Buck's character are huge, and noticeable right away. My third example would be about how in the beginning of chapter 3, when Buck is undergoing changes in himself, he decides he doesn't want anything to do with the fights. This is an enormous difference to the other chapters, because most of them he spends fighting. He goes from trying to ignore and staying away from fights, to killing Spitz because he wants to be the lead dog. The changes Buck went through seemed to almost make him a different dog. He killed Spitz killed all those Yeehat tribe members, nearly killed the man who was fighting with John Thornton, and he killed a bear and moose. He didn't even kill the moose nicely, he nearly tortured him to death, preventing him from having any water at all in the few days and making him so weak he could barely stand. The dog Buck was this the beginning is not the same dog as in the end, thanks to the character changes he goes through. My final example would be how Buck felt about the judge's family compared to John Thornton. When he described how he felt about the judge it was arrogant things like among the terriers he stalked imperiously, and Toots and Isabel he utterly ignored, for he was king king over all creeping, crawling, flying things of Judge Miller's place, humans included. This shows he doesn't really have faith or trust in humans, and he thinks of himself as better than them, and not equal to, it's completely different than to the ending of the book, where he is so fiercely loyal to John Thornton that he is willing to kill the Yeehats to avenge his death. He also did anything that John Thornton commanded him to, like pulling the 1000 pound sled or defending him in fights. There is a massive difference between the past Buck, and the end Buck, I hope throughout this book you have seen these changes in Buck's character, and that my essay helped point them out to you. This book just goes to show you that even if you start out as a lazy, unloving dog that you can turn into a 1000 pound pulling, fiercely loyal sled dog in the end. Thanks for reading and or watching.